Today we're going to be talking about section 2.8, which is on graphing linear and absolute value inequalities. So a linear inequality is graphed very similar to a linear equation. The only difference is that you have an inequality symbol in how you set it up, such as greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to. And when you make your line, it somewhat changes. So when you have less than or greater than, we're going to have a dotted line. like you did on a number line, and less than or equal to or greater than or equal to is going to be a solid line, similar to how you make your points on a number line. We also have to shade a boundary on our graph, which includes all of the possible values that satisfy your inequality. So if I'm going to try one, the way I do it is I set it up the same as I set up any other linear equation. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do, first step is to write it out like it's an equation, with an equal sign. Okay, now I can solve this like I'd solve any other linear equation, put it in slope-intercept form by subtracting x from both sides. So 4y is equal to negative x plus 2. Then I would divide everything by 4 so that y is by itself. And so now I have the equation y equals negative 1 fourth x plus one half. Okay? So what I do is I set up my points the same I would any other time. And I'd say, okay, well, my first point is at one half. Okay, and my slope is negative one fourth. So I'd go down one over one, two, three, four. That's my next point. Go down one over one, two, three, four. Okay, I could also from here I could go up one and back four. Alright? So I have four points. Now I look back to my original inequality, and you'll see that it's just a greater than symbol, which means it has to be a dotted line between those. So I make a dotted line between those points, just like that. So now I have a dotted line. Now the next thing I have to do is figure out where my boundary is, which side do I have to shade on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try a point. Now the easiest one to always try is zero. 0, 0, right here, okay? No matter where it is, unless it's on the graph, you can try the point 0, 0. So if I put that into my equation, I put 0 in for x, 0 in for y, I get 0 plus 4 times 0 is greater than 2. So really that's saying 0 plus 0 is greater than 2, or 0 is greater than 2. Is that true? It's not. So that means the sign that 0, 0 in is not part of the boundary. So I'd shade above this one. Up top here where I've shaded, those are all possible solutions to my inequality. Now I can check to make sure that this is correct. So if I pick one over here, let's say right here, that's the point, 0, 4. So if I put 0, 4 into my original inequality, okay, so I put a 0 in here and 4 into a y, I get 0 plus 4 times 4 is greater than 2. Well, zero plus 4 times 4 is 16 is greater than 2. Is that true? It is. So we did shade it correctly. Here's a couple guided practice problems that you can try on your own. Now, we can also use this to set up word problems. Okay? Here's an example of one. It says, a recreation center offers various 30-minute and 60-minute art classes. The recreation director has allotted up to 20 hours per week for art classes. So the first part is to write an inequality to represent the number of classes that can be offered per week and then graph the inequality. So if I think about it, I'm looking at hours, right? So now these classes are in minutes. So if we think of it in hours, 30 minutes would be half an hour, so 0.5 times some class, we'll call it x. And then the other one is going to be 60 minutes or 1 hour times y. And altogether, they have up to, which means less than or equal to, 20 hours. So I'd set up my inequality like this. A half times the first class, because they're 30 minutes, plus 1y, or just y, of the other class, has to be less than or equal to 20. Okay, they could have less than 20 hours worth of classes, but they can't have any more. So if I set this up, this could be my answer. Okay? This would be my answer right here. But they asked us to graph it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up in the slope intercept form. So what we said was to rewrite it using the equal sign. Okay? 
I would subtract 0 0.5x from both sides. And I find that y is equal to negative 0.5x plus 20. Now it would make sense to do this on a full coordinate plane. Instead, we're just going to make an L graph. Okay, with this being my x and this being my y. So this is my 30 minute class. And this would be my 60 minute class. Okay, so. Okay, so I'll say if each one of these is 5, 5, 10, 15, 20 it would be right here. Okay, and each one of those is 5 as well, so 5, 10, 15, 20, right here. Okay, so I'm going to graph, so you'll see that it starts at 20 on the y-intercept, so it would be right there. And my slope is negative 1 half, so I'd go down 1 over 2. Even though those are 5, they can still be the same. So down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2. Down one over two. And so this right here is my line. Now I think about my boundary and I think about where I have to shade because I'm not done yet. So again, if I try zero zero, easiest one to try, if I put this in zero plus zero is less than or equal to twenty, that's true. So I'm going to shade everything below. And for the most part, when you do linear inequality graphs such as this, you're going to have it be in the boundary shaded below. Now part B says, can the recreation director schedule 25 of the 30 minute classes and 15 of the 60 minute classes during a given week? And explain your reasoning. Well, what I could do first is I could look to see if that would be in my um, bounded region. So 15 and 5 would be like right there. It looks very similar to on the graph. So I can't truly tell if this works or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 25 for x, and I'm going to try 15 for y. And I can actually go to the original equation and do that. And so I'd say 0 0.5 times 25 plus 1 times 15 less than or equal to 20. Okay, so solve it out. Half of 25 is 12.5 plus 15 less than or equal to 20. Well, 12.5 plus 15 is 27.5 less than or equal to 20, which is not true. So is it possible to have this? The answer is no. And the reason because is because it doesn't satisfy our linear inequality. Here's another guided practice problem that you can try as well. Now the last thing we want to look at is absolute value inequalities. Absolute values are very similar to linear inequalities. The only difference, again, is that you're going to have an absolute value. It's going to form a V-shape. And we still have to have solid or dotted lines, and we still have a boundary that we change. So if I look at this one right here, the first thing I said is to let it equal, let it be like an equal sign. Okay? Right? So absolute value of x minus 4. Now we learned in the previous section that this minus 4 right here moves my whole absolute value graph down. So normally, okay, it would start at 0, 0, but in this case it's going to move down 4 units. So right there. Okay. Now again, the absolute value is going to go up every time by 1. Okay. I look to my original equation and see that it's a greater than or equal to, so that means it's going to be a solid line. Okay. And now I have to figure out which area I shade. So again, you can see right here, 0, 0 is right in the middle of it, so we'll try putting 0 in for y and 0 in for x and seeing what happens. So 0 greater than or equal to absolute value of 0 minus 4. Absolute value of 0 is 0, we get 0 greater than or equal to minus 4. Which is true. So that means we would shade right above it. Now, if it was incorrect, your boundary would be below and all around the absolute value. Here's a couple guided practice problems that you can also try as well.